this project is a result of Ms. Heimstra's actual participation um, in ASU Model United Nations for really the, uh, the past three years. Um, uh, in her capacity as president for the past two years, um, she has been largely responsible for the team's growth and development. And as the advisor, she has relieved me of a lot of stress. Uh, and I actually, I don't know what I would have done uh, without her. Um, a large part of her focus as president has been to demonstrate that Model UN is not just, you know, the opportunity to take a fun trip in Europe, um, but a vehicle for uh, students' success, right? A challenging academic experience, a whole experience. Um, so I expect at the end of the presentation you'll be as convinced as I am about this. Um, so take it away, Ms. Amstra. Thank you. So who knows what Model UN is? Okay, you guys who participate don't get to count. <laughs> All right. So Model United Nations is actually an international program for high school and university students. And there are conferences all over the world every year. Students from all disciplines learn about international systems, and particularly about the United Nations and diplomatic relationships. So when I say from all disciplines, I mean I'm an education major, we have government majors, and we have had counseling majors. So I'm saying all disciplines because it really is. And it is a way for students to network. Um, most of the Model UN members who are here today could tell you, we have people on our Facebook from two, three years ago and from all over the world. I have people from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Ghana, Israel, and they're people I've met through Model UN and the conferences. And it's not just that they're other students. These are students who are going on to accomplish incredible things, as you'll see a little later in the slideshow. So the benefits are increased academic skills, which also lead to professional and personal skills. Um, you'll notice I'm standing up here talking, and for me, I'm looking fairly comfortable. I didn't look this way two years ago when I did Student Scholar Days. I saw a YouTube video of myself not too long ago. I was looking down, I was reading everything, and I was extremely uncomfortable. When I looked back at it, I was not happy. <laughs> so one of those things is speaking skills, which I'm obviously using right now. We do research, and I mean a lot of research, because when we go to our conferences, we cannot represent the country we are. So I can never represent the United States. In the last three years, I have represented Argentina, France, and Brazil, which meant I had to do a lot of research to understand those countries not just their political stances, but also their culture that contributes to that. It also means writing skills, because we have to write a lot. We write speeches, we write country studies and position papers, and we have to do also resolutions and working papers. That means we have to come up with solutions to the problem, and they have to be solutions that other people from other countries and cultures will agree with, or else they can't succeed. And all of this leads to new perspectives. I didn't know a whole lot about any of the countries I represented until I had to go research them. And I learned a lot about those people through the research. I learned even more when I attended the conference and met people from those countries. <clears throat> And of course, there's the new perspectives, which comes from learning about that and meeting those people. It comes from finding out that people are really just people everywhere, and a lot of what they do is based on how they were raised and what they were taught, the same as here in the United States. And I also get the experience of finding out what they think of people from the United States, which can be unflattering or flattering, depending on where they're from. And I also have a knowledge of world politics and current events that I never thought I would have. When you watch the news here in the United States, you see what they want us to see. When you start looking at the newspapers and the newscasts from other countries, you get a whole new perspective. And when you go to your Facebook page and someone from Israel is talking about the bombings from their perspective, you get another one again. 
these international connections come from our international conferences. And the conference I want to highlight was in Geneva in 2012. This was a pretty special one because the conference itself is an NGO, a non-governmental organization. Because of that, the ECOSOC committee, which is the Economic and Social Committee, their resolution was actually sent to the real UN ECOSOC to be taken into consideration for solving the very problems that they were working on at that time. <clears throat> now, it also meant that we got talks with and by UN officials at both the opening and closing ceremonies. We got to tour the Palace of Nations, which is the original home of the League of Nations, and is now still a UN functioning building. It's actually where the Human Rights Council is housed, and we got to see them in action through closed doors, but we got to see them. Um, we also got to explore the history of the League of Nations and the UN through tours and talks. Um, I was extremely lucky. The chairperson of our committee is actually a UN guide at the Palace of Nations, so we got to see a few things that maybe some of the others didn't. Um, the personal experiences and growth come from having to meet expectations beyond the classroom. Not only do we have all the work that I spoke of earlier, but as an organization on campus, we do a ton of community service and a lot of fundraising. It's the only way we can afford to do the conferences, but it's also our way of giving back. It's our way of living the UN motto of world peace and improvement for those around us. What the UN is all about is making things better for everybody. Lifting people out of poverty, having jobs for everyone, clean water, and also ending war. And so what the model United Nations is about is contributing to that and working our way towards that, even if it's only in our own little community at first. Um, <clears throat> The development of the ability to think on your feet. You guys might be wondering what that is. We have to give impromptu speeches. And what that means is Dr. Centeno says, oh, by the way, you're talking on this tonight and you have five minutes to prepare. And you have to come up with a one or two minute speech. And where this comes in handy at conferences is when another country like, for instance, Mauritania says to France, you're not playing fair because your laws protecting the LGBT should also be extended to Muslim nations. And I now have to come up with the reason why France doesn't do that. And I have to respond pretty quickly. <laughs> um, this increased knowledge of cultures also allows for better, better interaction with other students, both here and abroad. Um, at the conference we went to this year, there was a young man from Switzerland and we were having a conversation about what compromise is and is not. And his take on it was that if you couldn't compromise on a matter, you failed. My take on it was there's a difference between compromising and just giving in. To which he told me, you would say that, you're an American. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was sitting next to him for the whole conference. He changed his mind by the end. But that took some interpersonal skills because he obviously had a view of me based on where I came from that wasn't accurate. And it works both ways. Um, and this is a personal experience that cannot be duplicated by a book or on a computer. I can attest to that. For the first year, we did all this work. We researched countries, we talked about cultures, we debated each other, and it was a lot of fun. And then I got to my first conference and I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Probably because I didn't. <laughs> Luckily I had a mentor, Alfonso Casillas, who had been in another conference, was there with me. He was Argentina as well. And he walked me through what I needed to do and then he turned me loose. By the second conference I knew that I was going to continue learning as long as I was in Model UN because it was an unending opportunity and experience. So here are some photos that came from our conference in Geneva. One of the most interesting experiences was that we got to sleep in a World War II underground bunker. 
in bunk beds, as you can see. We are all along the top there. Um, this is a picture from the St. Pierre's Cathedral. And actually, I'm not sure how well you can see it. It showed up better on the screen. You can see a cityscape reflected on glass in front of a model of that cathedral. This was one of the highly cultural experiences that we had. This church was once totally stripped down and used to store coal and salt because Martin Luther preferred another church in the city. It's been totally restored and the history is incredible. But beyond the history, it also told us a lot about the culture of Geneva. The fountain in the middle is the tallest mountain in the world. And it is in Lake Geneva. And the chair on the edge with the missing leg is in front of the Palace of Nations. And it's there to represent some of the very things that are being worked on to end, and in this case, war. And the relationship of war to damage, not just to things, but also to humans. And the missing leg represents those children who have lost their legs to mines that are still in place. Um, the bottom picture is Dr. Centeno standing in front of the building. Um, and the top picture is the whole team. And we're actually standing at the podium where the League of Nations was run from and where they still have occasional meetings now. Part of what I wanted you to know is about the professional piece of this. The girl at the top is Katie. She's from London, and she, go, she was going to the School of Economics at the time we met her. She, sit, switch, she has since switched schools. And part of that came from her experience at Model UN in Geneva. And as you can see, she was in Indonesia to lobby the UN, not the Model UN, but the UN. And she got to meet with some very important people while she was there. And that was just the start of her experience. She's also met with the Prime Minister of England, along with a lot of other people, and it came from her experience with Model UN. In addition, ASU and UN students have also gone on to become congressional staff members. There's at least two of those. There are two who are now medical students, two who work for NGOs, one for immigrants' rights, and three that have gone on to graduate schools. And that's only a few of the outcomes that Dr. Centeno could think of off the top of her head. Now, we're not saying Model UN causes this. It's possible that that is the cause. It's also possible that these students joined Model UN because of the type of student they were. But it definitely helped them to get where they were going. Um, and as you can see at the bottom, that's all of us sitting on a retaining wall outside the Palace of Nations overlooking the city of Geneva. So does anybody have any questions they'd like me to answer?